Hey friends, Justin here. Today I have with me the Sea to Summit Etherlite XT Extreme. This is a new pad from Sea to Summit for 2021, and it's the cold weather or winter version of a pad I've talked about a lot on this channel, the Sea to Summit Etherlite XT Insulated. Well, the insulated version has been one of my favorite and most comfortable pads out there since it first came out. I'm really hoping that the extreme version addresses the problem I had with the insulated version where it wasn't quite cold enough for me on frozen ground and in freezing temperatures. We're going to take a look at whether the almost double R value of the extreme allows it to sleep warmer in colder temperatures as well as look at the specs and features of the pad to see whether a lot of the benefits and the drawbacks of the insulated version carry over to the extreme version. Overall, we want to see if the extreme version can help you optimize your backpacking trips and be more comfortable in the backcountry. I have with me here the men's size regular. On my scale, it weighs 715 grams just for the sleeping pad and then another 60 grams for the stuff sack slash inflation bag. As you can see, the pack size is quite large for the extreme version. This is how it stacks up against the insulated men's size large as well as the Nemo Tensor regular wide width pad. The really awesome stuff sack slash inflation bag carries over from the insulated version. So let's scale the bag, inflate it, and then finish off talking about the specs. So in order to inflate the pad, you open up the colored end first, you take the pad out, lay it all out. And then on the other side, there's another cinch here that you open up and then you pull out the inflation bag portion of the pack. And you take the little nozzle that's on the end of the inflation bag, stick it into the valve, with only one flap open. And then from about a foot away, you blow into the end of the bag. It inflates up the inflation bag, and then you can push the air into the pad. As you can see, it's really easy and quick to inflate the pad with this inflation bag. And the Sea to Summit system is one of my favorite out of any of the sleeping pad inflation systems out there. Just like all the other Etherlite XTs out there, the extreme version is four inches thick, so super cushy and comfortable, and that's one of the main selling features for this pad. It comes in four different men's sizes and two different women's sizes. I have here the men's size regular. I usually like a 25 inch wide pad, so I was a little bit hesitant to go with the size regular, but see how it makes their size regulars a little bit bigger at 21.5 inches wide. And that combined, combined with the awesome baffling system that makes it super supportive as you get close to the edges has actually made it a really comfortable sleep. And with the men's size large weighing 230 grams more than the regular, I think I'm gonna be okay going with the size regular. The extreme version has an R value of 6.2, but we'll hold off on talking about warmth to a little bit later. And it costs $200 for the men's size regular. So not a cheap pad, but we'll see if the benefits are worth that cost. If you're interested in picking up the Etherlight XT and use the link in the video description, I get a small commission that really helps support the channel at no extra cost to you. Next, I wanna talk about some of the similarities between the extreme version and the insulated version, starting off with baffling. The baffling on the Etherlight XTs make them, in my opinion, the most comfortable sleeping pads on the market. They use an air sprung technology in order to provide that comfort and it's super stable and supportive. Air sprung technology essentially takes loops and connects the top of the pad to the bottom of the pad, creating these dimples that you see here. And this baffling technology allows the Etherlite XTs to be super stable and supportive. They have great edge support and allow, that allows you to use the full width of the sleeping pad. And these little bumps that are created in between the dimples make the pad super comfortable and are really great at relieving pressure points. With a pad that has horizontal or vertical baffles, I find myself getting pressure points and with horizontal baffles especially, I'll sometimes have my arm fall asleep. With the little dimples and then bumps that are created with the Ethelite XT, it really does a good job of relieving those pressure points and I find I don't get any sort of pressure on my shoulder or hip or other parts of my body over the course of the night. The outer shell of the sleeping pad is also a 40 by 30 denier ripstop nylon and has been super durable for me with my insulated version and I have no doubts that's gonna be the same with the extreme version. Both versions also use a really good lamination technique that results in really low percentage of failures with the pad. So in order to make the pads airtight, the Etherlite XTs use an extrusion TPU lamination. So this is in contrast to a film lamination that other companies might use where they apply a film to this outer layer here and that's what makes it airtight. With the extrusion method, it makes for a really reliable airtight seal. We already saw the valve here in action when we inflated the pad, but 
but the valve on the Sea to Summit Etherlite XT pads is one of my favorite out there. It uses a double flap system in order to provide a one-way inflation valve when you're inflating the pad, and then another flap that you open up in order to dump air really, really quickly. It makes it easy to deflate the pad and then roll it up and put it away. The elephant in the room with this pad is that it's still noisy. 99% of the problems that I've heard people have with the Etherlite XT insulated is that the material that it's made out of is slightly plasticky sounding. And when you have it on your tent floor or you're moving around on it, you can get a bit of a plasticky crinkly sound. And for some people that's really annoying. I don't have problems with it. I do sleep with earplugs though. I do wish that Sea Summit maybe used a little bit more of a softer material that was brushed and a little bit less stiff. Something like what the Nemo Tensor uses. Even though it's a polyester, I think that's a really nice material for a sleeping pad. Next, let's talk about some of the differences between the extreme version and insulated version. First up, the color, black versus gray. The extreme version is black. And I don't really think there's any sort of benefit with that, just a little bit of a different color scheme. It's also $20 more expensive for the extreme version. So not a huge, huge price increase if you wanna go with the extreme version. And the big difference with the equivalent size extreme version, it's 50% heavier than the insulated version. So that's a huge weight increase in order to get what that other difference is, and that's with the R value. The R value for the extreme version is almost double the insulated version at 6.2. But with that, you get quite a bit more warmth out of the extreme version. In order to achieve that warmth, the extreme version uses a really thick thermolite synthetic insulation. Even when the pads deflate, you can really see how thick and lofty that insulation inside the pad is. Synthetic insulation is quite bulky and it doesn't have the same warmth to weight ratio that you'd find with reflective insulation that like you'd see in a Thermarest Neo Air pad. But the key is, does the synthetic insulation and the Etherlite XT Extreme keep you warm? So let's talk about that. This pad was just released and I've used it a handful of times and I've tested it out down to minus 10 degrees Celsius using my cold weather sleep system testing protocol. For the protocol, I make sure to use the exact same base layer. I wear a 250 merino wool base layer. Then I use the same sleep insulation. I use a Enlightened Equipment two quilt layering system. I monitor air temperature over the course of the night using this Bluetooth thermometer. So this connects to my phone and I leave this outside my tent and it logs the air temperature over the course of the night. Then I can sync it to my phone in the morning and see how the temperatures fluctuate over the course of the night. And that allows me to look back and say, okay, I woke up and I was a little bit cold at this time and this time, and then I can correlate that to temperature. And then I also use a laser thermometer to test ground temperature. Ground temperature is as important, if not more important than air temperature, especially when we're in the spring season like we are right now, and the ground's still frozen and wet. It's really gonna suck the heat out of you. Based on my testing so far, the Etherlite XT Extreme is quite a bit warmer than the insulated version. The insulated version just got me down to about freezing temperatures, where so far with minus 10 degrees Celsius, the Etherlite XT Extreme has been really warm using my testing protocol system. And I think it could get down even colder, no problem. I forgot how comfortable the Etherlite XT is. I haven't been using it all winter because the insulated version I have had just wasn't warm enough. So if that's what you're looking for, a sleeping pad that's warm and also super comfortable, then definitely check out the Etherlite X XT Extreme. You're gonna have to deal with the rubbery noise as well as some of the other downfalls with it, but I think it still is one of the best cold weather sleeping pads on the market right now. If you're interested in why I think quilts are better than sleeping bags, even for cold weather like it was last night, then go check out a video I'll post right up in the corner there where I talk about why I think quilts are better than sleeping bags. Thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you next time.